On this episode, things get serious. Dun, dun, dun. Christian keeps making a lot of mistakes with the bullets. Like it duns. But don't worry. This is not your fault. <laughs> Um, hmm. Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDevs Academy. Welcome to another episode of the Advanced Schmuck Tutorial, episode 60. And yeah, uh, if you're watching this way in the future, it will seem like a seamless transition from the last episode, but for me, it's like two months later. It's crazy. It, there has been a huge undertaking in the meantime. I had to do like some other videos, but now we continue. Today we are going to return to... What did we do? What did we even do? Well, we were working on the bullets, as you might remember. Let me go into the load path edit. Oh man, such a different, different place. Okay, right. Um, so we have now this little program where we can fire bullets. The bullets are not good, but we're gonna s fix that in a second. Uh, we have some pattern goals. These are some goals that we need to, uh, that our bullet system, our bullet pattern system has to achieve. Um, before we start, I want to amend this because there's one little thing that I put, didn't quite put that I observed when watching other shmups that kind of like a behavior that I want to replicate, a very, very simple behavior. And that group uh, behavior is something like, let's put it in here. We have static shots, we have aimed shots, we have like this rapid fire. But maybe before rapid fire, maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe before, maybe after, I'm not sure, quite sure. <laughs> Let's call it 3A and 3B. Um, I want to add, that was my cell phone, I'm sorry. I want to add this thing where um, I've noticed that in a lot of shmups you have like ground enemies and the ground enemies don't shoot that often. They're, just, they're more like popcorn ground enemies. And for those enemies, you have sometimes like this thing where they sometimes only fire. So um, they're firing sporadically. They, there's no like a pattern happening. It's just like every now and then one of them will fire, but others won't fire. And it's like this very um, random behavior. And it's not quite clear if it's something that we're gonna solve with the patterns. We could also solve it on the behavior level. Um, Let's try to solve it on the patterns. I'm gonna put it on the list and we're gonna see if there's a good solution for this. All right, so we have the system. Let's, let's, let's see, move simulated enemy with mouse. We already did that, fire on click, we already did that. So today, the thing that we're gonna do is we want to uh, create bullet sprites, sp uh, bullets with different sprites. Uh, or sprites animations. This was one of the doggy zone challenges, like come up with some designs for bullets. And actually in the coffee section later on, we're gonna see some really good designs that I've seen in a community that I wanted to share with you. Uh, but also right now, I wanna share with you some designs that I've came come up with. And these are, um, these took some time. These are difficult. If you noticed like, hmm, it's not, not easy to make those designs. I'm gonna save pad edit. I'm gonna load cow. Up. Uh, this is the sprite sheet that we had, as you might remember. Now, um, I'm always using this pink color. I'm always using this pink color to indicate the space that is not used. Mm, because sometimes, you know, the black color is sometimes used for something. But I'm thinking of actually maybe using a different color for that. Uh, what kind of color? I think maybe this color might be good. Because it's like this fleshy color that is, uh, there is little contrast to white. That there's a bit of a downside here, but I think it's a good idea to put this, I don't know, fleshy color is maybe the wrong term, the peach color. Um, mm, 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 let's put it here. I want to fill this out a little bit with this peach color. And um, so we kind of know which pixels are free pixels and which, oh, that's too much. <laughs> and which pixels are, um, are, uh, used up by some sprites. And I'm gonna be bold, I'm gonna be bold. I'm gonna delete this, this little bad boy here. That That is gone, that is a goner. That is goner. That is a goneria. 
<laughs> sorry, I'm so, this was this was not good. I went for it. it. It was not a good joke. Okay. Yeah, and I think these things, these as these these guys here are also gone. You can already tell that we deleted the old bullet because we're gonna get a whole bunch of new bullets. Uh, let me let me show you some bullets. Let me show you. Let me just select this. I'm gonna put some bullets down here. This is gonna be the normal bullet. Bloink. Just a three bullet animation, three bullet animation, and in fact, um, yes, quite so quite often what you see is that I actually you know stop frame some animations from uh, Esperate, and actually what you see sometimes is you have the bullets that kind of shape shift a little bit. They kind of like wobbly. It's kind of like supposed to be like some kind of plasma or like some kind of plasma ball, right? And it's not just like a, a circle that just moves. They're, um, it's getting bigger and smaller, for example, sometimes. There's like some kind of pulsating going on. It gets brighter and, and darker a little bit, like the shading changes. And what you often, quite often also see is that it changes shape. It, it Sometimes it's round, but then it turns into like a like a, like a a little bit of an egg, like an oval, and then it gets round again and maybe turns an oval in a different direction. So it looks like maybe it's like it's rotating. Maybe like, like, there's like two masses like rot rotating. It's... It's it's a bit of a chaotic thing. It's supposed to be like again like this hot plasma kind of ex uh, impression, and I think these bullets are kind of trying to do that. Also, we are flashing between different colors, and that is first of all it's supposed to look energetic. And if something is like really energetic, like if you look, um, for example, in the dark, like in the night when you look at stars, you know they're kind of like flickering, right? But also some, it seems like some of them are changing colors. That's because of different like. Uh, you know, chromatic effects from your lens, from your eyes, and then from the atmosphere and so forth. Um, but yeah, also if you like look at something that's incredibly bright, it seems like it's sometimes kind of like flickering in colors, you know. Um, and I think that's probably a good um, good thing to use for the for the bullets because they're supposed to be eye catching. They're supposed to feel bright and energetic. Um, one thing to um, to keep in mind is that we are walking um, knife's edge here a little bit. Uh, those things can, you know, uh, flip over. Can 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 turn into just like too difficult to look at. They're supposed to be really punchy, but also they you're not supposed to be like ah uh, you know <laughs> I don't I don't want to watch this. So. This is a bit of a difficult situation. We kind of have to assess out what the right balance is. I'm not sure if I hit the right balance here. Um, we're gonna see. This is kind of like a first prototype. Um, I did some experiments. I did actually quite a lot of experiments. And this is the thing I came up with. Now I'm trying to put them in some kind of cool place for them to live. Uh, ideally, I think, ideally we would move things together. Is, it, is now the good moment to move things together? Let's move things together a little bit. So let's let's put them down here. Uh, we're gonna do, have to change a bunch of sprites now, but I'm willing to to take this sac uh, to make the sacrifice. So we move now this thing over. Now the problem is if we move this over, we're not not quite sure where this big sprite ends. So I'm gonna do put like a little dot in here, so I know where the sprite ends. Okay. So this is the first bullet. This is like the normal size bullet. It's kind of like a mid sized bullet, but that's not it. I also have something other prepared for you. This is the small bullet. I want to have like different sizes of bullets. Sometimes we're gonna have big bullets, sometimes we're gonna have small bullets. And in fact, you want to have a bit of a repertoire of different bullets because kind of our brain wants to kind of like latch onto different like shapes and, and colors as well. Um, with colors, I had some problems with, with my design because we have a very noisy background with those trees and everything. And it was difficult for me to find color that always works with every background, with the water and with the forest and with the meadow. Um, so I settled for white just to get like a crazy contrast between brightness, like because sometimes the trees in the background are very, uh, very dark. So if you put something white on top, it's gonna pop. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good solution. We're gonna see how that works out again. Uh, but in my experiments, it seemed all right. And that's kind of like what we're going for. Something that seems all right for you. And then, you know, you're gonna ask for, for opinions from other people. Oh, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. Uh, what, why? I, I, I missed, I did, did a mistake. I, I don't wanna destroy the, the red. The red's supposed to stay here. That's, that's kind of like part of the sprite. Okay, I'm just gonna park it in here. And then, my magnum opus. 
Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so this is, and this part is actually not part of the bullet. This is the big bullet, the chunky bullet. And I was like considering what to, like you could just make a huge blob, right? But in this case, I did something that I've seen a lot of shmups um, happen. It is sometimes like the big bullets are actually seem like there are three bullets orbiting each other. And you know, there's different ways of doing this. You could like, create actual three bullets and move them around like three circles. But in this case, I just like did a sp some sprite work. I actually made a little Pico tool that drew the bullets and, and rotated them, you know, and then to get like the, the right kind of look and shape because like doing it by hand in, in a pixel art tool, like drawing the circles and make the circles move around was a bit difficult. Uh, so I did that on a, in a Pico tool. And then later on, I, I did some editing, post-processing in, um, in, uh, in an editor. Oh, by the way, this is also, yeah, this is correct. Weird. Okay, so where do these go? Huh. Now I'm thinking that maybe, do, is, do we have space in here that we probably don't, right? We probably don't have space in here. There's no space for us. I could put this up here, but that still won't be enough, right? Like this is not still not wide enough. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> there's some Tetris happening here. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, it fits perfectly. Um, and then I can just like take this block here and move it over to this and then up and something like this. And now there's like a huge gap there. Maybe we can fill this up later on uh, when we actually have everything. Uh, we can maybe spend some time, um, you know, like optimizing all of the sprites and everything. But for now, I'm good with this solution. Maybe I should do it now. Maybe I should can pack it now somehow better. Like how, how tall is this? All right, so this is my packing solution. I don't know if this is good. Um, there's definitely things that we can do. For example, this sprite here, that's actually part of the of the splash. And that splash is kind of not great. It's, I think we can we can make that more efficient, more, more compact. But for now, I think I'm, I'm good with this. Mm. Okay, so now I want to go to the sprite editor and fix all of the sprites that we moved around. And then I'm gonna add the bullet sprites. All right, so load. Right, did load right did. Let's run this. Okay, let's see what sprites look weird. None of this stuff looks good. Ah, no, that's good. Oh, this is see, this is this is wrong. All of these are wrong. Although the splash, this splash looks okay. Oh, but now this is shifted. Okay. So let me open up a second Pico 8 window so I can at least... I'm gonna open like a second Pico 8 window. You don't see it, but... Um, and I just so I can see the, the sprite. All right, so let me, let me fix this. Okay, I noticed there is a bit of a problem here. The a part of the bullet um, encroaches on this one explosion. I'm gonna fix that in a second. Let's continue now. Okay, so it seems like I've, I've um, fixed all of the existing sprites. There is just like this bull sprite. This was supposed to be like our old bullet that we had previously. That one is broken now, but we're gonna fix that in a second. For now, I want to export this and fix like this little problem that we have. Right, yeah, it's here. I had this problem here. Uh, these bullets have to be shifted one to the side. F uh, lucky enough, we do have the space for this, so that's not, not gonna be a problem. Just like this, boom. And then we actually have a little little gap there. Let me, let me actually fix that little gap. We can move these, oh, oh, oh that's not what I wanted. Let me move these bullets uh, so it's a bit tighter together. And this gives, uh, gives us a little bit of a gap here. I don't know what to do with this gap. Again, I think this sprite here, this part here, I think this could be a more efficient 
uh, but we're going to do a pass, a packing pass later on. Uh, for now, I just want to have something that's roughly okay. All right, so now back in the bullet editor, let's now create all of those bullets. Um, so first we're going to have the middle size, normal size, so we're gonna, let's call this bull M, and that's going to be animation frame 1. Bull M1, is that good? Seems good to me. <laughs> Alright, so this is now the first animation, like the animation of the middle, mid-size bullet. And as you can see the last frame, there's actually four frames, but only have three sprites. Uh, the last frame is kind of like the entire sprite is flipped. Uh, so we add, apply this flip effect to that, and this should give us this kind of like wobbly kind of effect. We're going to see that in a second. Um, but before, before we're going to do the preview of the animations, I want to actually add all of the sprites to this. And then we're going to go to the animations. Um, one thing I want to maybe note is that these bullets could be a lot more efficient. Uh, we, they're all kind of like spheres, so when it's a smear, you can, it's symmetrical, so you could like half them or even quarter them. Um, I'm a bit apprehensive about doing this with bullets because we don't have a lot of those on the screen, and I kind of like want to make them as easy to mechanically, as easy to draw for Pico 8. And I'm not sure if there's going to be a slowdown if we make the bullet consist of multiple elements. Um, if we are hurting for sprite space, I will totally do that. But that's something that we can still do later on. For now, I want to concentrate on just seeing if the, the design works. Okay, so let's get the small bullet going. Okay, so this is kind of like the three sprites that we have from the small bullets. For this bullet, I had some other ideas in mind. It's still gonna be four animation frames, but we're not gonna flip uh, a sprite. Instead, we're gonna repeat one sprite, and I think it's gonna be this first sprite. Yeah, this first sprite, we're gonna repeat this a little bit, so we still get that wobbly effect, but no no mirroring necessary. It's kind of, I did some experiments with different animations, and that uh, solution worked well for me. Okay, now for the big and chunky bullet. All right, so ooh, this, this, this took a little bit of a while. I had to look at some of my notes, how I set it up. But yeah, you can see this is the animation. So um, let me go through the numbers so we can like replicate this. So this is animation frame number one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. Uh, animation num frame number three, that's the same one as one, but flipped. And you have to like make sure the offsets are right so it, it aligns correctly. So three, uh, and one are the same frame, just flipped. Uh, and uh, I did a bit of a, I made, made a mistakey, where I think animation two is supposed to be this, but they're arranged differently in the sprite. Yeah, yeah, so this is number one, this is number two, then back to one, and this is the number four. Uh, the third one is one flipped, right? So one, two, three, four. It is a little bit of a chaos here. Maybe should have moved them around, but um, but yeah, if you get it right, then it sh we should get a nice little spinny little molecule of a bullet. Now that we have these things in here, I want to create the animations for them. Okay, so we're gonna go load and edit. And if you're thinking like, hey, Christian, did you save that? Yeah, totally. <laughs> We really need to implement that autosave soon. All right, so let's get those bullets in here. I wrote down the numbers so we remember. And again, this is also something that we might want to fix. We want to maybe see a preview of the bullets already here in the animation. 
Okay, so 11 is going to be the normal bullet, and that is going to be. Um, so we're going to add. Oops. So we're going to do 40, uh, 41, uh, 42, 43. Very, very simple, right? A 12 is going to be a small bullet, so this is going to be 44, 45, 46, and then 45 again. The idea is that we're repeating the second frame twice. I think this is. This is the way it's supposed to go. And then, uh, now comes a big bullet. That's very simple, 47 and up. So 47, 48, 49, 50. 50. Export. All right, finally, we get to see how those bullets look. Uh, let us go to load, uh, load sprite it. No, low, uh, load pad edit. Whew. <laughs> this took a while. Okay, so where do we create those patterns? We create in them here, pad shoot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is the animation library, right? And we're starting with 11. So let's try animation 11. This is this is our basic bullet. It it it. It is a bit flickery, and the reason why it's flickery is it is very fast. I think the animation speed that we are actually aiming for is a little bit slower. Let me uh, lower the animation speed to two. I think this should get, yeah, yeah. Might be still a little bit flickery. Let's try animation speed three. With those animation speed is always a bit um, very much dependent on the speed at which uh, the, the bullet is moving, right? So if the, mo uh, the bullet is moving faster, then you need a bit of a faster animation speed for that bullet. And if it's moving slower, then it should animate slower as well. So if uh, the bullet is looking flickery, like it's just like just moving too fast, that means that maybe just it's moving too slow and you actually have to speed up the bullet movement and actually keep the animation speed the same. Uh, yeah, this seems fine. This seems like a good anim animation speed. It is a bit flickery. Uh, it is a bit of a, like a very vibrant bullet, but maybe that's okay. Uh, let us try the next animations uh, that we have. So this is 12. This is the small bullet. Yes. Excellent. Small bullet. Mm. And this is the big chunky bullet. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> nice little electric popcorn bullet. Mm. So the animations are working. They are nice and good. What we want to do now is set up the system of kind of how to make them work, how to make those patterns work. Right now we're setting like pattern shoot, like pat shoot is our, our function here. And then it says like, okay, the enemy is shooting and this pattern is shooting. And we're just like dumping a bullet into, into, onto the screen and that is it. Now, what we actually want to do is we want to uh, create like a library of patterns and export that library of patterns and, and also like create the bullets based on the data we have in the library. So we kind of have to set up kind of like a system. We could actually think about the system that we want to set up. I have a plan and here's my plan. So the plan, the plan is always a linked list. <laughs> Some, something like a re recursive kind of situation. So this is our patterns list. And it's going to have like some different types of modules, so to speak, right? The modules will have like some different, there's going to be widely different information of those modules. Sometimes there's going to be just like a very simple module, sometimes it's going to be a more complex module. And the idea is that those modules will build up on existing modules. They will kind of like interlink a little bit. So for example, this module will take uh, whatever is in this module and modify it. And this module will take whatever is in this module and modify it. So we can stack like effects and, and uh, mm, yeah, like modifiers on top of each other. So a module can be a modifier. Okay, so let me break it down a little bit. Let's, let's make it a bit bigger so I can like write it here. So let's say we have a simple bullet base. Like a simple bullet. It's just gonna be like a bullet that just flies off into one direction. That's gonna be this here, right? And then uh, we're gonna have like a modifier that is gonna just basically saying, take whatever is in that slot and create multiple bullets. So now we have like multiple bullets going into one direction, right? And then we're gonna have like a spread, something like a spread, spread modifier. And that says like, okay, take whatever is there 
and make it go in different directions. So it's then we're going to have like some an effect that goes like this. So we're going to be able to stack those uh, those effects on top of each other and create like start with a simple thing, but it's just like one bullet flying out, and make it like go create like crazy patterns by stacking those effects on top of each other. Today, what I want to do is I want to focus on this base effect. I just want to have create like a bunch of data in our pattern library that is enough to fire a single bullet. Okay, so let us just put something in the pattern. Let us just put create like a pattern. Uh, let us do something like data entry number one. I have a new keyboard, so I'm, <laughs> it might be difficult for me to find some things. Equals. I'm going to create like a like a pattern. I'm going to just create a pattern. Uh, the first entry in, in each pattern is going to be just like something that's human readable that tells you what kind of pattern it is. And this this time I'm going to just go say it's a, it's, it's a base. It's a basic bullet. And now we can think about okay, what kind of information do we need about that bullet? Um, we maybe need an angle. Do we need need an angle? Yes, yes. For aim bullets, we need an angle. We need a speed. So this is going to be ang. We're going to need speed. Uh, we need a sprite animation. So let's call it Ani. Uh, let's start with 11, I think, is the basic bullet. Uh, we're going to need an animation speed. So in our case, 3 was, I think, OK. Uh, it should be a comma. And what else do we need? Uh, the bullet needs a collision. So we also need a collision. We don't have collisions yet. <laughs> Let's just set it to 11 for now. Uh, is that OK? No, that's not OK. What is the base uh, sprite of the bullet? Uh, let me look it up. Look it up. It's 40. So let's set it to just 40. That's, we're going to use the sprite of the bullet as the collision. And you know later on, we're going to have smaller collision boxes for the bullets. But for now, that's OK. So this is going to be the collision. This is a pattern, like our first pattern module, like a base module. And it's not referencing anything else. It's kind of like creating bullets from scratch. And so let's see if, I mean, let's run this. OK, that works. Let's export this. It exported. I'm curious if this actually is now in the, this, did the export work? Yeah, there is, a, there is our, our basic pattern. So if this works, then let us uh, let us continue with our work. We let's create the three bullets that we're talking about, the three basic bullets. We have an, the normal bullet, the small bullet. The small bullet is animation 12. Otherwise, everything stays the same. Now, the speed might be faster for the smaller bullets, but we're going to keep everything at the same speed for now. Uh, we're going to tweak the speeds later. Uh, and then uh, this is going to be the third bullet. That's going to be the... Uh, the big bullet, right? So this should get us some data in here. I'm going to save this. I'm going to run. I'm going to export. This should have exported this. Again, I'm going to see if this actually worked. Yep, that's worked. So these thing, three things have been exported. Now the question is whether that will actually load in the editor. But you know what? Let us, let us make it so that when we click uh, that we're going to get all this information from the pattern. Uh, I'm sorry, my Dropbox was just synced. Some stuff has been changed. This is not your fault. <laughs> this is my computer. Um, so let's go uh, data. Let's grab the, the animation here from from uh, from the pattern editor. So we'll, let's go data. Uh, and what is the animation? The animation is one, two, three, four. That's the animation, right? So let's go four. OK, let's try this. OK. And so now when I do this like this, OK, it small, fires the small bullet. And when I do it like this, it fires the big bullets. Cool. So it's, it's you know, we're just grabbing the stuff from the, from the database. And now I can see if I can, OK, let's run this. Let's make it sure that we're exporting this. And then we delete this stuff. 
And now we're still going to get the bullets because this stuff has been now written into the text file and loaded into our text editor. So these three base patterns that we created, they are now in an editor. And our job is now to make those, edit those things work. There's two things that we're going to have to work on. There. And, and let's, let's do like a to-do list for those. First, we need some UI to edit the pattern module. <laughs> Uh, so we need a UI. We want to see the, the different pattern modules. And then we also want to actually uh, make the patterns do the thing. So we actually, this is kind of like a bit of a hodgepodge that we created here. We kind of like grabbing information from the stuff, but actually making sure that this pad thing, that this actually works. Um, let me see real quick. Where do I... Where do I do the, the patch shoot? Uh, here, when I'm clicking, I'm doing a patch shoot one. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to make this patch shoot a little bit a little bit more useful. So, um, a local um, bull, uh, my bulls equals make pat. Uh, and then I'm going to go pat. Um, yeah, let's, let's, let's do it for now like this. So I want to create a function that, call, that is called makePad. And this function, what is, this will do is it will take a pattern in our list of patterns, in our list of pattern modules, and it will execute all the stuff that is associated with a pattern. So if it's like a modifier that preferences another modifier, it will go through all the different modules in the list and it will create a huge array of bullets and it will just spit them out. And this is the where it spits them out. We're just gonna, here we're gonna create the patterns and we're gonna put them in like in a little my bolts thing. And then we're gonna do like a for b in um, all my bolts do. And I'm just gonna gonna add those to the stage for now. All right, we're gonna go through this and, and add all of the bullets that the pattern maker has created and we're just gonna add them to the stage. Later on, we're gonna maybe not quite add them to the stage, but for now, this is, this is a good start. Okay, and so now here in a pattern maker, uh, we're gonna, gonna get the pattern. Is it patlib? They call it patlib. Pats. I think I just call it pats. Okay. And then we're gonna go if my pat. Let's put it in here. Oh gosh. Oh no. I I shouldn't have. I deleted it. I deleted. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Let's continue. So if my pat one, if that's base. So if we have like a basic pattern happening here, in this case, we're gonna go um, also, let's do like a ret, that's gonna be the return array, uh, and that's gonna be just empty. You know what, let's, let's not optimize just yet because it's gonna get really confusing. Um, let's do a local ret, like a create an empty array, that's gonna be the return array. And at the end of the pattern maker, we're just gonna return ret. Oh, like this. Right, so if the pattern is 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 a base pattern, then we're gonna to add to the return array a new bullet, and this bullet will take all of the values from this base pattern. Right, so x equals hmm. the x and y position thing is a little bit. We're gonna to have to think about the x and y position. This is just, let's just put a uh, put a put a question mark in here. Y is very clear as well. SX is gonna be zero. Is it SX? I think it's SX. SY is gonna be zero. Ani is gonna be, now we're grabbing the information from the pattern library, right? So this is gonna be, um, oh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't save, I saved nothing. I saved nothing. 
like a dunce. Okay, um, I think one, uh, so I think this is, uh, first was speed, uh, angle and speed, and then we got animation, I think. So that's gonna be three, I think, hopefully. Uh, and then we're gonna have Anis. Oh, is it Anis or Asani? I'm not, <laughs> I forgot. Let me, let me look for Anis. Yeah, I think it's Anis. Yeah, Anis. Uh, and then call is gonna be like so. Um, something that we're not doing is we're not making actually the speed effect um, the stuff here. We're gonna think about it in a second. Let me, let me, oh, oh we don't have an H associated with a bullet. Easy fix. Easy fix. Uh, oh yeah, right. I think the animation is supposed to be an array, right? I haven't been coding this this in a while. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Okay, uh, not quite what I expected. All right, yeah, yeah. So this is supposed to be four. This is supposed to be five. This is supposed to be six. Let's try that. Okay, this works now. The bullets spawn in the in the corner. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. So I think when we're adding the bullets here and here, this is where we have to do some stuff. So for example, b dot x uh, plus equal plus equal uh, n dot x and b dot y plus equal n dot y. So at least there's, we're spawning them where they're supposed to spawn. This is this is working great. Um, now the problem is that we're having is like the speed and and uh, the speed x and speed y is something that we haven't figured out. Um, with the bullets, it's the same with like with the sh with the with the uh, 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 enemies. I want to not actually define the speed x and speed y. I want to define angle and speed. So um, here I don't want to set s x and s y. Uh, what I want to set is ang and speed. Uh, ang is gonna be uh, my pet. Uh, I think that was uh, two, and speed is my pet three. Mm -hmm. And so here, where we're creating the bullets, or where we're adding the bullets to the actual stage, here is where I will actually calculate the S, X, and S, Y. And I would do it quite late, not here in a pattern maker, but here when I'm actually spawning the bullets, um, for reasons that I think might become, like the order of things is really difficult. Here with the pattern maker, we might modify the angle and speed still, right? So the angle and speed is still kind of malleable. And I we kind of like set it in stone by the time, in, in that moment where the boom bullets actually enter the stage, actually are being displayed on the screen. That's where we want to set the stone, set the speed and uh, in X position and Y position in stone. Because as we said, the bullets don't change direction and don't change the speed once they have been fired. But before we were creating them, we still still faffing around with that. So b dot sx equals uh, sin b dot ang multiplied by b dot speed. Same thing here. Uh, and this is going to code sign. Let's try that. Yep. Yep, it's working. It's working. So uh, let's see. Let's try number two. This gets us this bullet. And number three. This gets us this junky bullet. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so now we are creating those bullets from the patterns. Now this is all still very experimental and, and prov provisionary and we're gonna 
figure out better ways of doing these things. But for now, I think it's working. We're using this base pattern to create bullets. The next goal is to create a UI to edit those base patterns. But that's something that's coming up on the next episode. For now, let's move on to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Mm. Yeah, the doggy zone. Very obvious thing to do in a doggy zone is to just go ahead and create the UI necessary for us to, you know, I want to be able to flip to different, different patterns, different modules in our pattern list and, and like go left and right and to select different modules and then see all of the properties of the different modules and be able to edit the properties so I can tweak around the bullets as I, uh, as I work on them. So this is gonna be something that's very similar maybe to the sprite editor, something like this. I'm thinking something like the sprite editor. Uh, maybe something like the anime editor, but the anime editor is supposed to go like this very, very long list. This is going to be a bit simpler. So yeah, very simple goal for the doggy zone. Yes, and this is the part at the end of each episode where I say a big thank you and huge shout out to the people who are supporting me on coffee.com. And today I have been doing a newcomer's welcome for a long, long time. This, I'm sorry, it's like two weeks of newcomers that have... Uh, gathered so yeah huge welcome and a huge shout out to the new people uh, joining me at coffee.com uh, this is gonna be that trunk arcade john eric b arcane lab mr g corniel rex roof julian geoff Gianni kangas zomigoro farian pizza bus Kese Kaiser, Salty Max, Rewind, Paul, Daniel Roncancio. And of course, we also had some one-off donations from Walter Robin, Sven Spron, Grim Brim, Boris JT, Jimac, Andrew G, and Corey. Welcome everybody and thank you so much for your support. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I have at the end of this episode, I have like little bonus that fits really well into this topic. Recently, uh, we saw Louis Chapman um, continuing work on his beautiful shmup Kali Khan, uh, working on a second level. I'm really looking forward to what he has in store. And he posted this beautiful GIF, which is kind of like a GIF of different bullets that he has in store. You can see that he uses different shapes. You can see that he's using different colors as well, which kind of helps sometimes with complicated patterns to differentiate different layers of a complicated pattern. We might actually want to do this at some point as well. Uh, a really cool inspiration for how to do those bullets. I really like how he does like the pulsating, how the different the bullets have different shapes and so forth. Cool stuff, definitely something I take inspiration from and probably you should too. Yes, yes, yes. So this was episode 60. We are getting there. We have our new custom bullets in there. We are setting up our bullet system. Next time around, I'm gonna talk about the UI. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.